As debate jargon become too much of a chore? Does every round you enter leave you wanting to know more? Well, look no further because one clap is the key. It's time for Professor Graham and Kevin's ABCs. Hello, debaters. Welcome back to another episode of Professor Graham's ABCs of Debate. I'm Professor Graham, here with my pal Kevin, and today the word of the day is going to be signposting. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Hey, 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 it's that time of year again, where I trick you into thinking we're talking about one thing, and instead it's a completely unrelated term that doesn't even start with the same letter. Signposting is symptomatic of another problem that exists in debate, and that's the problem of organization. Organization debate genuinely is a hassle and is difficult to understand without doing it for a while. How in the world do you take 10 sheets of disconnected pieces of paper with like 8 completely different arguments on each, throw your blocks in a file, and extempt the other half and still have a cohesive speech? While I personally can't instill you with superpowers, I will try to give you some helpful tips. Starting off first with giving an order slash roadmap. Giving an order means describing to the judge what pieces of paper you're going to be talking about and in what order you're going to be doing so, starting off first with policy debate. This looks like saying the order is going to be the econ advantage, the hegemony advantage, T substantial, the counter plan, and the DA. There's small little things here that help determine the order of your pages. If you're AF, always start with your offense, i.e. your advantages, then jump to your opponent's arguments in order of threat level. That means T and other procedurals at the top, then counterplans and critiques, then DAs. You can drop a DA and still win a round. The same cannot be said about the other arguments. If you're negative, it's your offense first, then you move on to the case. As for non-policy debaters, this was a trap. You should ideally be doing the same thing, but I understand that the more traditional styles of debate don't have the same flowing habits. So here's my proposed middle ground. Stop saying that the order is going to be my arguments and then my opponents. You have said, quite literally, nothing to me. You should explain what contentions you'll be covering in order. Typically, this will just be going down the flow for the purposes of easier organization, but let's say that you skip a contention. Then you should make that apparent in the order so that your judge doesn't have their pen in a weird place, expecting you to say something that you're not. For example, the order is going to be my climate contention, my hegemony contention, then my opponent's contentions in order. This explicitly tells me where you're going down the flow and doesn't sound like you're just trying to mimic every other person you've heard. Next, how do you start your speeches? Or better yet, how do you waste the least amount of time getting from your desk to the podium or even standing up? What you should do is the second you send your document or you know that it's your turn to speak, stand up and immediately say the order. Then, after everybody gets the order, you should ask if anybody's not ready. I have a couple of pet peeves here. Stop asking if specific people are ready. It takes extra time and it's weird referencing your judge as judge anyways. Another thing, I don't know who popularized this one, but saying, time starts on my first word, is just kind of weird. Just start when you're ready after asking other people if they're ready. Because if they weren't, they were lying, and that's on them. So don't waste your own time by having to preamble all your speeches. Now with those out of the way, we actually get to talk about signposting. Yay! Signposting is the process of announcing where you're at on the flow. There's two places where this is particularly relevant. First, when you move to another piece of paper or a contention. The imminent second you move from the DA to the counterplan or from one contention to another, you should make it obvious with your words. The most efficient way of doing this is just by taking a quick pause, abruptly moving to the next page, and just saying what it is. For example, so the counterplan can't solve the affirmative. On to the DA. That kind of organization will help people follow along with the order that you previously set, and makes it obvious where you're making those arguments on the flow. 
The other place to do this, which isn't really signposting, is to start labeling arguments by negating them. For example, when you're going down the flow, instead of saying things like they say X, we say Y, or responding to 2AC2, you should try to be as efficient as possible. In both of these scenarios, you're either explaining your opponent's arguments for them or saying unnecessary jargon that gets lost very easily as numbers rampantly fly around during the debate. Instead, try labeling the argument you're on by refuting the claim that your opponents make. For example, if they say that U.S. influence fails, nobody trusts the U.S. after Trump, when you get to that argument, you should just say, Trump didn't hurt our influence, then jump into your specific warrants. We still know where you're at on the page, but you didn't have to explain your opponent's entire argument for them again. It's more efficient, it makes your job easier. This method in particular will save you a lot of time and make debating much easier for you. So now, I hope you understand that learning the signpost is just making your speech a little bit more organized. Got anything to add, Kevin? <laughs> Forever? <laughs> I hardly know her, dude. <laughs> and I think that just about does it for learning how to flow. Uh, any thoughts, Kevin? Easier? <laughs> I hardly know her. <laughs> hey, thanks again for watching today's episode of Professor Graham's ABCs of Debate. As always, I'm Professor Graham, and that's my pal Kevin. Um, yeah, if you ever need any help with debate stuff at all, my email should be right up here. Just make sure you CC your coach. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If any debate tips that you might need, I'll drop that knowledge on you. Bam. <sighs> thanks for watching. Been a pleasure. See y'all later.